Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Zotac Graphics Card. Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Zodiac Killer. Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Zelda Goron. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Zeriel Goristro. Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Zombie Goblin. Is that a, zo a goblin zombie or a, the gobbling done by a zombie? I don't even know. Alrighty, welcome everyone. I am Tiabu and I am here for Zeta Gundam. Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam episode Fuck. 38. Last episode was the Day of Dakar. Uh, we, we did a big announcement and then that got attacked. And then that attack had to stop because it was on camera. And people were like, hey, Tetons, maybe you don't want to do the murdering in the middle of a city. On national TV, on international TV, on global TV, on space TV. Maybe, maybe don't do the, don't do the murder in front of everybody on the space TV. And so they had to back down. But not before causing some inner city harm. And not before the word got out. Uh, the broadcast says, yeah, there are some weird particles in the atmosphere. We had to shut everything down. It's being jammed. What are you going to do? And that's a filthy fat lie because they were broadcasting via fiber optics. So they were just trying to shut down the broadcast because what Shar said was crazy. And we actually have to take a step back and talk about it in context of the story as well as the, the thing that is going to spread. What Shar said is crazy. He wants everybody on Earth to leave Earth. So that Earth stops being polluted and we can just chill in space. That's a hell of an idea, Char, and a crazy undertaking, and maybe possible, given that he's Char the Red Comet. At least he could bolster the support around it. And it seems better than this authoritarian, totalitarian, uh, horrifying monstrosity of violence and hatred that is the Tetons, uh, masquerading as uh, the salvation of mankind because they're going to destroy the remnants of evil factions, yada yada. Right, okay. Um, whew, seems like a better alternative, but like, crazy idea, absurd idea. All the humans on the earth, out of the earth, into the sky. Uh, we'll see how that plays out and how it ripple effects. Like, maybe that's not the end game. Maybe that isn't what we end up going for. But at least it's out there into the world now. Char got up in front of the camera, revealed his persona to be false. It's gone. He's no longer Quattro Bugina. He's revealed that he is, in fact, Char Aznable, the Red Comet guy who everybody knows and is like, oh, shit, that guy's talking. <sighs> It's sort of like a, a general of the last war reveals themselves and is like, I'm running for uh, senator in this case. It's, you know, I was thinking Roman government. I'm running for consul. Are consuls, are consuls chosen? I forget all my fucking Roman history. I've taken a lot of Roman history. That's what happens when you take a, like Latin and AP Latin and, and Latin courses in college and stuff. You end up with a ton of Roman history and shit. And it's all sort of mishmashed together in my brain now. I should go back and re reevaluate that. Uh, I drew drew pictures today. I've been drawing a picture every day. I ended up drawing two today, honestly, because the first one I was just simply unhappy with. Mostly because Jared looks like a Beavis and Butthead character. In fact, both of them look like fucking Beavis and Butthead characters. I don't you know. I guess that's what happens. So I, I think I had an idea when I went into this one, and that's part of the problem. I had I didn't just like put pen to paper and let it go, which is what I've been doing, and that's been really interesting. I had an idea, and the idea was I'll pull it up here. It's like the poster from um from Promare, where you've got Gallo and Leo like smashing heads together, and then there's all this like stuff behind them. They they're each representatives of their own faction, and then they've got their whole faction out behind them, and it's this whole set of ideas and ideals that they represent, uh, all built into that one conflict. Bam! And so then the resolution of that conflict resolves the whole conflict between all the things. It's a great poster. It's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite posters. I kind of tried to do that with, like, the butting heads between Jared and Camille, but they ended up looking like Beavis and Butthead characters, so, hey, Buttheads. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't plan that. I, I wish I had planned that. Fuck. Uh, do I, do I re-edit so that it seems like I've planned that and you think I'm smarter than I am? No. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, but I set out to do that, and so I started by framing things that way, 
and then I wanted to make the characters seem semi-accurate to the characters that they are, and so figuring out how the characters are designed is like, you look at the thing, and it just is Kamiyu, and so then you close your eyes, and you've got this representation, it's like, who's Kamiyu? Well, he's got blue hair, and it's sort of swooshy, and he's got, he's got a little nose like a human, and like a face like a human, and that's not what it, the, the, the drawings of Kamiyu look like at all. That's not what they look like at all. Anime representations of people are weird. It's so weird that we can even imagine that these 2D representations are anything like people, let alone that they remain consistent over time, let alone that, you know, in, in the last episode, there were a bunch of scenes where the characters felt a little bit off model, right? They're like, the shape of the face at that angle isn't what I think that that character's face would look like at that angle. How the fuck do you know that? Why does it feel wrong when it's wrong? And it is. There, there is a way that it should be, like... Your brain is able to manifest a full two-dimensional reality that represents a three-dimensional reality, and you know how it should be within that. And when things line up properly with that, you're like, nice. When things don't line up with that, you go, ew. And then, then it, can, it can mess with that, and you can go, whoa, that's different than I expected. And you can, you can play with the whole space because the, 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 the two-dimensional reality, you know, with a properly, a, a carefully creative animator can completely warp that shit and mess with it and create insanity anyway I, tr I tried to draw that and it demonstrated to me immediately that i don't know as much about drawing anime styled individuals and things as i thought i did it's like a couple days ago i drew a wine glass that was also a guitar i drew a wine glass and as soon as i had drawn out the structure of the thing i was like how how would the light and shadow on this actually work? And I can do the the physics simulation in my head, and it's wrong. <laughs> Shit, fuck! It's like you take a you take a shiny thing, right? Well, the part of it that's shiny, it's not obvious what shape that is. You're like, oh, it's the shape of a bottle, and your brain sees that it's a bottle, and it's like, it's just a bottle, bro. I get it. No, it's not. It's like. It, it, there are parts of it where they're the same color as the background, and yet your brain draws in the line where it is. You know where the difference is. What? There are chunks of this that are the same part of the background, but yet you see it as a contiguous object. There are parts of it that are reflective and reflecting completely separate objects. That bottle is now reflecting that bottle in, in some in some real... I don't even know where... In some real sense, it's there it is. There, that's that. It's got a whole other reality in just the reflection of it. So, it's not exactly trivial to try to draw that shit in a way that you look at it and you go, that's a wine glass. Fuck. Okay. All of that to say that all of my complaints about characters being off-model in Zeta Gundam are some bullshit, because I couldn't draw them on model if I were paid to. Uh, <laughs> give me a year and I'll get it down. And that's somewhat serious. I mean that somewhat seriously. Give me a year. Because I'm going to draw every day for a while, and we'll see how long that lasts, and if I come to hate myself. But I really have been enjoying it, and so I'm going to draw every day. This one started without an idea. I just started with the face, and then I draw in the Kamiyu hair, and then I drew in the pieces of the Zeta that I recognized. And it's like, he's manifesting the Zeta out of him. Huh? Thanks, brain. This is way more interesting. This is way more interesting to me as an image than those are. I think there's something about setting out to to represent something specific that I find much more difficult than just letting the creativity flow. And that might say something about my artistic ability insofar as I have any. Where I direct it seems to matter immensely for the quality that comes out. I don't know, it is totally an aside. Maybe a part of that is that when you orient specifically toward a goal, then you can fail. You know, if, if I say, I want to mimic the Promare poster, except make it be Camille and Jared, well, then I've got two exemplars of exactly what those should look like. You know, a thousand images of Jared, a thousand images of Camille, um, and the, the poster that I'm aiming for, and so my attempt looks like none of them, and I can easily compare it and go, this is the goal, this is where I got to, that feels terrible. When I just put pencil to paper and try with no goal, no, no, no purpose no bright line we might say um 
then I don't know when I've crossed that bright line and I can always sort of pat, pat, pat and be like, well, you did good and it ended up looking interesting. So that's all that matters. <sighs> Drawing is weird. Art is weird. Art is hard. Art is hard, and so am I. <laughs> Brain! Brain, no! Dave Dakar. Shar has removed his mask. The Ayug has demonstrated some degree of goodwill. And while they did take the... the audience hall by force, nobody's talking about that at this point. Everybody's talking about the Tetons fighting in the city, and everybody's talking about the return of, uh... Hero villain from the last war. A general now running for senator, sort of. So Shar, the boy with the sunglasses, with the hair, the shining light of Zeon, against Zeon, steps forward into the political sphere. And that's what you do when you're public. When you're not hiding behind a pseudonym. You're in the politics now. How will Shar do in politics? I don't know. He's now fulfilled his, uh, the last request of Blex. <laughs> and stepped directly into the limelight. It's the kind of action that will either get him power or get him killed. Or one and then the other in quick succession. So our, our three, in the public consciousness, three parties are now in play, really. Axis, Zeon, not really. Sorry, not Zeon. Not what I meant. The Tetons and the Ayuk. And then, at a deeper level, the conflict is between new types and old types. And the scrambling attempts it seems given that i still don't and will not pretend to understand what exactly we mean by that i know that a lot of people have been like it's so much simpler than you're making it all right i, I don't i don't i don't know that it is it's it's there are some elements of it that are pretty clear and then they get real fuzzy at the edges um you got the scrambling attempts of the old types to generate their own version of new types that can be easily controlled something like that is the cyber new types idea and that doesn't seem to work very well given what has happened to all the cyber new types we've seen seems to seems to be like if you if you mess with the natural order of a humanoid something goes wrong inside that person's soul place whatever it is that gets trapped by gravity that's the part you've messed with and you get results like four who can't stop fighting who's constantly fighting herself, who has no memories, no past, no future, who's just stuck forever for. Fuck. Boy, we don't want that. And then I, I, I wonder at that fitting into the, the ideas from the Tomino interview that we started with, which were like, women can't be pilots, women shouldn't be pilots, etc., it's like the system has endeavored to force Four into an arrangement psychologically that will enable her to be a monstrous pilot. And in doing so, they've birthed a monstrous pilot, and she can't be any of the things that she's supposed to be. And she feels unfulfilled continuously, and she's in constant pain. And then she's dead. So you mess with the, mess with the underlying substructure of a human being at your peril, or something. So we're fighting about politics, but we're also fighting about personal identity, and we're also following, fighting about social change on a broad scale. And that social change has something to do with, like, the capacity of the youth to uh, observe and empathize with the problems and failures of the past and learn from them. So... This is going to end me. This isn't gonna absolutely destroy me uh yeah that'll that'll do at least they're at least they're lined up now good good though let me know what you think of the background and stuff it's probably better this way isn't it 
it isolates me visually. I know that I had that revelation months ago during the Kill a Kill video. I've just moved away from it because I've wanted to do it differently, but this is the way to do it, isn't it? Straight up on black background, bam, wham, nothing else in frame, straightforward. And then I can kind of, I can put the stuff up here. If I want to show something off that's on paper, I can, I can put it up here. And then that gets covered in the picture in picture version at least. And that's pretty good. I don't know. Let me know what you think of that. Let me know if you think of any good Zeta Gundam puns. They're not really puns, just, you know, word that starts with Z, word that starts with, with G after each other to pretend. <laughs> zoot, zoot, good suit. Um, let me know what your favorite is of the ones that I said. And if you come up with any others, I'd love to hear them because I've been chuckling to myself all morning as I come up with like zebra gilly suit. <laughs> Idiot. Idiot. We're on to episode 38. I can see the title of it, and so I'm going to mention it. It's Rakoa's Shadow. Maybe I should try to avoid seeing titles for the next episode from now on, because that feels like it might be revealing some stuff. So Rakoa is dead to our characters. Um, of course, we know that she's in the hands of one spiky-haired yellow suit-wearing boy... Because he's uh, an insane, edgy biker biker man and has fully integrated with his monster. Maybe he just is monster. You know, in the in the Jungian shadow sense, it's like he's all shadow. He's as shadow as can be. I don't know if that's an integrated person or a completely disintegrated person, but either way, he's on the full the full side of pure edge. We haven't seen how that's going at all. We also haven't really, because things have been one after another and one after another, it's war, uh, we haven't really had a chance for a lot of the characters to be real sad about that. Char got to stare at a cactus for a little bit, and he was a little bit off for a little bit, but... And and he was a little off for a little bit, and it's unclear if that being offness has contributed to, contributed to like him falling to Earth and not paying attention during that battle. Maybe. Self-doubt. Maybe. But Rakoa's shadow indicates to me that we are really going to be focused to some extent on the effects of Rakoa on others or Rakoa's existence elsewhere or something. And I'm excited by that. It's a cool plot point. It's the core plot point that I fucked up months ago was the whole Rakoa and Shar thing. I didn't understand it. I, I, I not only didn't understand it, I forgot it. And then I mistook it and thought she was actually dead. So I had this faulty representation of the whole story and now we've got this this story mostly right i think and i'm really curious what the pieces of that piece of the story are let's watch episode 28 and maybe we'll maybe we'll get to find out if tomino feels generous today and maybe this episode will have nothing at all to do with rakoa or her shadow or shadows in general or any anything at all and we'll com completely be filler <laughs> We'll just have a Gundam Beach episode. Oh, that's something funny. Gundam has no filler. Hmm. It's not funny. It's just different. It's just different. There's no pandering. It's just trying to tell its story. And do it seriously. I've never thought about that consciously. But if, like, of course it doesn't have filler. It would be be so wrong if it did that's just to say that it's right that it doesn't that's Camus style thumbs up Dun -dun. let's watch episode 38 all right i've got the episode up and ready to go let me make sure that it's on the right audio track and subtitle track and stuff yep that'll do that'll do episode 38 up and ready to go two versions picture in picture in the description uh uh timer on youtube bb timer to count you down let's go for santa gundam episode 38 oh
so cool. That's so cool. I, every time. I need to be a more capable artist. I guess it doesn't matter if I see the title, because we see them at the opening anyway. Hey, he's still... He's still going. <laughs> Yosh! Uh, uh. You're not in the city anymore. I'm gonna kill these motherfuckers. It's going down for real. Damn, that's a big boat. Or ship, or whatever. So, <sighs> mm. I'm not sure exactly what he means by that's an accurate assessment of human nature. I, I'm not sure exactly in context what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> Take him off, Shire. Hmm. You back to being the hero of the story, huh? Back to the Amaro Ray of the old days. Hmm. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Hmm. Don't fight. Oh, that was dead. <laughs> I got both of them wrong. Do 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 do. All right, Jared. <laughs> Time to be angry again. <sighs> ah. They've killed so many girlfriends. <laughs> what have I ever done to you? It's not like I killed your girlfriend. Oh, it's not like I killed your mom. Oh. <laughs> oh. This feels really familiar. This feels very familiar. Good idea. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. That feels weird. Ah. I don't know how to feel about that. 
still struggles to rep like take his new identity. Even though he's the one that demanded he he switch it. <laughs> uh. Really familiar. <laughs> uh. <laughs> no, he meant he really expects you to ram that fucking thing. Oh, that was cool. The way that those bloomed out was very cool. I got one! Don't get cocky, kid! Yatta No ramming for you. All right, we'll take that. I'll be pissed if you're dead. <laughs> doesn't feel as doesn't feel as loving. <laughs> How dare you hit my lord! Ah, 1v1 me, boy. Yeah. Ah, techno stuff. Mechanical design stuff. Yeah. Alright. Get wrecked. Eat my dust, Jared. Eat my rocket fumes! Oh, he's going for it. Oh, I don't know, man. Jared doesn't do useless. <laughs> Remember, he kept a boot knife. <laughs> Alright, Jared falling to his death. Oh, Jared falling to his double death! <laughs> that should do it. It won't, but that should do it. Hmm. Hmm. We'll see. Back away to space. Space, Earth, space, Earth, space, Earth. Hmm. Considering it a promised land. Hmm. So the... Mm. Okay. The spirit of four living within me is related to my undertaking of the proper ideal for others oh uh, that's complicated argma yazan yeah we don't need the shuttle anymore we can just fly around let's go oh something about the stars looked weird there okay Manta rays! I forget what they're called. Perhaps a lack of their primary two defensive mechas, or just mechas in general, might be it.
Yikes. That was a cool shot. That rotation was not trivial. Tough stuff. Why are they dumping ballast? You're already in space. Jeez. Hmm. A couple of... We got this mentor thing going on that's more, more properly arranged for these two. Ah, the important stuff. So he's taking the wishes of everybody on Earth inside the Zeta. What are we doing with the shuttle that we needed to dump all that ballast? G-forces, huh? Yeah. You set the object in motion. It's. I understand that there are still gravitational forces. Like, it's going to stop, but... Yeah. I guess they are still trying to break orbit, so... The back and forth between them, they're really on the same page. It's, it's completely different. Ignored. Oh. <sighs> what? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that is true. No, no, Har would be of great help. You want a, you want a navigation droid. Do they think they're neat due to types? They might be. You don't fucking know. Yeah, if you can. They're inside the the armor now. Right. Hey. The dog donk. Fair enough. Cry it out in your rooms. How are you feeling? Your skin condition looks is still bad. It still doesn't look great. Oh, no! No! <laughs> no! What the fuck? I just love that boy very much. What? I mean, that's real defensive. That's real defensive. I, I totally imagine that I don't understand what you mean. You're lying, Rekoa. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. No! Wasn't Yazan already out in space?
Wow, 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 wow. New type intuition. Oh, that was cool. Not the super wires. Fuck. Sitting fucking duck. Well. Not you too, bro. Not you too, bro. Ah. Fa gets to save the day a little bit. And isn't totally useless, which is great. Thank you, Bright, though. Alright, the hero- a hero appears! Ah, Henshin. Ah, it's a team-up. Ah, it's just like what's been going on throughout the episode. Careful, girl. Instantly follows. Good. What's up? We back. Nani? Wow, the Methus is gone. Oh, that was a cool henshin too. Just froop. unfolds itself. And your your belief is no. <laughs> Fucking yare. Give me my bazooka. But no power pack carrier, right? Oh, spotted. Okay, Apolly. Don't get dead for it, please. Click, bang, bam, wham, boom. Dude, Rakoa is on board. Rakoa vibes. Fuck! Whoa! Rakoa vibes! Yeah, how can she see? She can't. She can feel. Okay, she, she forces her way through, and they... They follow, and it's going to save all of them. Just barely. Get the fuck off of me! Yeah, it is just as you told us. That was useful. Damn, he's listening. Man, that's a problem. Rakoa knows all their tactics and really understands at a at a at a core level. Hmm. Certainly something got in the <laughs> I had a vibe. I had a vibe. The hot boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. Did you just comment on that girl? Get the fuck out. GTFO, bro. 
Oh, but you are great as a spy. So you type die. Yeah, thanks, Fa. Yeah, Batchy is not... Not more... <laughs> better me than them, but better better you than me. Mm. We've seen it. Okay. Oh, it's it's not quite the same as him and Amaro, but it's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. Pretty saucy. Pretty spicy. Chikashi. Impossible. Masaka. Bakana. Yeah, but what if, man? Interesting. It really does make it somewhat mysterious what's going on with Rakoa. I think she's being completely truthful. I think she's a full traitor. For love. For compulsion. Being drawn. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> That's not what I expected. I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't quite this. Very, very glad. Very cool. Oh, hi. You're new? Maybe. Probably. I think that's a new character. And a cutie. Interdasting! A new cutie patootie joins the squad. Ah, uh, Shadow of Rakoa. Ends up being more like a ghost of Rakoa in some ways. This whole uh, taking off from Earth sequence is like a replay of the taking off from Earth sequence with different characters and different people fitting into the same roles and playing out the same the same pieces. And then that in and of itself was a replay of some of the taking off from Earth scenes in in uh, 80, 80, whatever in the first one. So it's like it's like a, it rhymes. Um, it's interesting. I don't know if it means anything, but it rhymes. Jared is pissed. This is no longer Dakar. I'll do as I wish. I'm going to murder some motherfuckers and nobody's watching. Hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, Jared. Okay, so the general public gets easily excited but calms down just as fast is what is being. It's probably an accurate assessment of human nature. I wasn't sure if it was that or if it was we old types can't help but give out unnecessary advice being the accurate assessment of human nature. Getting excited easily and then quickly forgetting what you were excited about or calming down, as you might say. Yeah, that's that's an accurate assessment of human nature if I've ever seen one. Getting up in arms about something and then forgetting it. And it is your job to change that characteristic in people. I think the meaning here is that it's your job to keep them interested and excited as they go on so that they don't forget, but I'm not sure. And then he goes, no, not mine, ours, like a good leader might. 
and that sets off the the big through line that I see for the episode has nothing to do with Rakoa. It has everything to do with Shar's leadership and his relationships with those around him, most notably Camille, but we see it in everybody that he interacts with. It's as though this isn't explicitly stated in the text, but I think it's I think it's what we're going for here. It's as though living a lie despite everybody knowing the truth that underlies that lie, living a lie, identity-wise, precludes you from acting in honesty with the world. And if you can't act honestly, you can't have the sort of reciprocal uh, give-take that defines effective relationships. Haito gives him a piece of advice. Shar gives him, like, a piece of responsibility saying, no, it's it's your job too. It's our job. We're all in this together. It's like a back and a forth. It's a give and a take. And it seems to me that the prerequisite for that kind of interaction, the prerequisite for that kind of reciprocal moving toward a goal together seems to be honesty. That's the big change. Shar took off his mask and stepped out in front of the world and said, this is the way that it, that, that it should be and this is the way that I want to go. And now that that's out there, there's this mutual respect between him and each and every character that he interacts with over the course of the episode. It's really different. Okay. Something, something. Manovsky particles. Get the fuck out, bitch! Uh, <laughs> he does it to Amaro. Amaro, take care of everything else for me. And we banter. Beltorchica says you're more handsome without the sunglasses. We banter here. Leave everything to us on Earth, Shar. And he can say it with truth and with, like, belief. With no, no lie to it. No, there's nothing fraught about it. There's nothing wrong with it. And so Shar hits him back with, it's reciprocal in a way. With you've changed, you're back to the you who was. He's like, no, that was you who changed me. And everybody leaves the conversation like, good conversation. That felt great. No conflict there. Touched base. And all of it is happening because Shar stood up at Dakar. I really, I really think that's the order of events. Narratively, is that Shar standing up and taking his mask off enables him to step into the role of a leader and member of the team in a way that he could not be because he was not himself. All right, we got to go. We got to do it. Our duty is to return to space uninjured, and Camille hits him with a hi. Right. No. No fucking around. No, uh. No backbiting, no biting back, no talking back, no argument, no nothing. Just straightforward, yes, let's go. And that's the first of a whole sequence of interactions between Camille and Char that are like, you're going to do this and I'm going to do this. And Camille's like, okay, and also we should do it this way because it'll work better. And Char's like, okay. And and I know from my from my knowledge of the way that this works that this is the way to go. And I know from my intuition and youth that that's true, but we should modify it in this way. And they both go, cool, we're directed toward a goal together, let's go. Okay. It's like a... In the... In the the an analogy space it's like this is the ideal of what an old type and a new type working together might be sorry if i'm completely wrong about what old types and new types means but old types have knowledge and new types are intuitive would be one way of putting it right and so we've got car char speaking from uh, a coagulated identity with knowledge and uh, experience and history. And then you've got Camille with his own half-formed identity, but he's basing everything off of intuition with a lesser degree of experience and knowledge and, and understanding of what he's already experienced, but mostly off of intuitive nature and his raw talent and skill. Something, something like that. And then the two of them are able to because they're both being honest with each other, because they're both willing to hear the other out, because they're both thinking, and because they're actively 
engaged and directed toward a stated goal that that unites them they're able to work those things together in a way that doesn't create conflict but instead creates more action toward that goal everything is directed toward the goal and everything that they do works toward that goal and that goal is like in the micro scale survive on the slightly larger scale make it to the argama on the slightly larger than that scale work together as a team for the future contiguously for like a while until we can reach big goal which is maybe get all the people off of earth but definitely stop the tetons from causing too much destruction and harm something like that and it before it was a little bit more scattered and now it's a little bit more aligned it's really cool it's really cool ah where's the yakushiki i'm looking for zeta i will kill the Z i will kill the zeta i already can nope operate operate in an official way self-taught style isn't good enough i'll learn it when it becomes more peaceful Shar Azna, and he can't quite get it out. He can't think of him as somebody else, and so he tells him that you can still call me Lieutenant Quatermain. I don't... And he, this, this seems to to soothe Kamiyu. He's like, okay, cool. Everything is still the way that it is. I think he'll come around to the idea that Shar is Shar is Shar. He is, of course, he's the one who demanded it, who like, who said, I've let my my lies slip away and whatnot you have to do the same so he he really asked for it and so you'd expect him to be up with it immediately but it is not so it's a little bit more difficult than that something about that feels right to me i'm just not sure if i can put my finger on it like that's what's going on here well that's what's intended to be going on here regardless it's a cool moment all right fight 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 shoot 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 battle 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 <laughs> Ram them! Do everything you have to do! Take them the fuck down! I want a dead Kamiyu on a platter. Amaro hits with a heroic snipe to the bridge, which is pretty great. We get a message for your son, essentially, right? For cats. I'm happy as long as you're alive. I don't give a fuck, just don't get dead. That's a good message. It's pretty great. No countdown, let's get the fuck out of here, and we bounce. And, uh, finally... Jared sees his target, sees his target, though, and is like, oh, ho, ho, you motherfuckers are trying to get away from me? I like the foreshortening, this, here, and the way that the, um, the legs of the bar, bar, barliant, um, become kind of goopy, they become kind of flowy, they, they end up, they curve instead of being rigid or, or solid, um, they kind of curve as they go, it's, it just, Stands out to me as a unique cut. Wee. Of course he'll be fine. Unfortunately, whatever you do out there, don't die in vain. Uncomfortable? No, but I can never get used to this terrible feeling. The feeling of transition space, of leaving Earth. You could put layers of metaphor onto it, but I don't think you need to. It's just, it's hard. It feels weird. They used to go through, it used to be much more difficult, is something like, there are layers of metaphor, I can't get away from the fact that there are. Char's like, this journey used to be more difficult for people, and it's less so now. They overcame impossible odds to get out to space, and the reason they did it was because they believed in a promised land, because they believed that it could be a land of milk and honey for them. And so, when we... You know, it's un it's unclear to me whether this is linked in with the the Judaic scriptural tradition sort of thing. It's like promised land in space, that would indicate that the transition between is like the Red Sea in terms of difficult place to cross that you have to get across from, and then you end up in the desert and it's like that things line up. It doesn't doesn't really matter. I can still see it that way in terms of the mythology. And you could say that Regardless of whether the authors of this text are familiar with that text, each text, every text, is to some degree a an emanation of the mythological framing of uh, of of reality. And so, insofar as it harmonizes, that's just harmony between things that might be completely convergently evolved or convergently ideated. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They uh, they thought they were going to go to space and things would be good. They chose to believe that things would be good, despite being forced out by the political elites on Earth, who forced a bunch of people out. 
they chose to believe that this would be a boon, a blessing, not a, not a punishment. And that's the ideal that Char sort of presents is like, if there are hard, hard times, and it's a real takeaway, it's a real genuine takeaway. If there are hard times, there's a seat across, there's the gap between earth and space, there's the, the bridge of torture, there's the, the walkway of coals, um, there's the hall of spikes, whatever you, however you want to ideate, visualize, think of this representation of hard things in your path, obstacles dangerous the dangerous chasm um um the 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 anger road what like whatever it is if you suppose that the goal at the end the place at the end will be a promised land a place of peace then you can make it it makes the walking through fire worthwhile that's the, that's the takeaway you're facing down obstacles. And I mean, this is going to happen a dozen times, a hundred times, a thousand times every day of your life. And then in a broader scale, every week, every month, every every period of your life, you're going to be able to find one element of that period where you're like, I'm either facing down a, a walk through coals, I'm walking through the coals, or I'm on the other side of walking through coals, and there's another walkway of coals in front of me, another hallway of doom, like whatever it is. Um you know, every day there's the struggle of getting yourself out of inertial state and like waking up and doing the things that you need to do and overcoming your own desire to just give up and die. Like just lay down and curl up in a corner and die. Y'all know that I've I've been battling with that one in different terms. And then on a broader scale, like there are going to be real struggles and real difficult times in your life. And sometimes those will mean moving spatially, and sometimes they'll be moving psychologically, and there will be torment and, and confusion and chaos and in the interim, and you'll feel like you're squished by G-forces in the interim, like you, you, you're trimming away parts of yourself and it hurts. You're being compressed and squished down by reality and it hurts, but if you believe that there is a promised land, a a different state of being at the other side, it can be worthwhile. And it might actually be worthwhile. Like, not, not just as an affirmation that might soothe your pain in the interim, but, like, it might actually be worthwhile. And it might only be worthwhile if you believe it to be. Because you can go through all that pain and suffering and get to the end and go, that wasn't worth it at all, and now I fucked up, and now I hate everything that I've gone through in order to get here, and I'm a failure and a fool, and, a, and now I should just curl up in a corner and die. You can do that. So maybe you have to choose from the outset to be like, no, no, no. Even if I get to a place and I discover that everything that I've done is for naught, it will still be worthwhile. Okay, here's a silly example. If you go through the last two months of my videos, my camera position, desk position, background arrangement, everything has changed like four times because I moved everything in my room around like four times completely. Totally changed everything about the perspective and the way of, of setting it up and everything. And where we are right now is right back to where we started with one change. The, the like dresser that used to be right here isn't here. You go back six months and look at the video, any of the videos, and they're exactly the same as they are right now. Slightly different lighting, slightly different camera angle, black background, black black foam on the side. The spatial location of my desk is back to where it was, slightly different. My bed is back to where it was, slightly different. I've come full circle, and everything is back the way that I thought it should have been from the outset. And I could... If I were cynical, vindictive, and hateful, I could look at that and go, what a fucking waste. What a waste of time, energy, and it made a bunch of videos worse than they could have been because the, the backgrounds in them weren't as good as they could have been. And the arrangement and the lighting and the organization and the, the framing of everything wasn't as good as it could have been. What a fucking idiot I am. How dare I? I should just curl up and die. <laughs> 
because because I tried to make a change in a positive direction and it didn't work and now I'm back to where I was before and little has changed. But that's not true. I understand a lot more about putting stuff in a room. And I understand how a couple of the different arrangements of my room made me feel. And I'll use that moving forward when I rearrange this room, if I do, or when I rearrange other rooms that I move to, which I hope to. Those failures, those lessons, can be lessons, and I, I, I choose to say they were worth it, because I could choose to say they weren't and it would hurt me, and I can choose to say that it was worth it and that helps me. I don't know. I don't know if that's what Tomino meant, but that's what I felt from it, so I have inferred. I don't know if that was implied. Anyway. They thought it more positive to think that way rather than hate the elites on Earth who forced them into space. And there's an undercurrent of admiration there, of course. And once people were able to shake off gravity, they acquired a new sense. And that led to the emergence of new types. And in that regard, outer space was indeed a promised land. That's easy to understand. What the fuck are you talking about, Kamiyu? No, it isn't. <laughs> no, it's not. Huh. Yeah, it's very cool. I will also pursue that promise. We are aligned body and mind and spirit. Both of us aim toward a common goal, right? Right. Right. Shar was not only able to state his common goal to the world, he's able to state it in specific, in context, to Camille and go, this is what I'm aiming for, are you on board? And Camille goes, yeah. Yes, sir. Let's do it. And from here on out, their, their interaction is like, let's do the thing, yep, let's do the thing. We're gonna do this, yes we are. We should also do this, yes we should. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, we're moving. Like momentum, bam. Like pistons firing at odds and then suddenly they fire in the right sequence and it's a brrr, the engine goes now Camille says a weird one right now that is my responsibility unless I do that four will cease to live within me and he wants four to live within him okay <sighs> okay so it feels to me less like Camille is saying, and I, I, I'll say straight out, I don't think that I understand what this means. Feels to me less like Camille is saying, I must pursue this particular promise, otherwise four will cease to live within me. The spirit of love lost, uh, possibility, potential, something like that. I think it's more what he's saying is, um, I must take up a, a proper responsibility. I must direct myself towards something worthwhile, otherwise that spirit will die. I'm really not clear, though. All right, whooshity whoosh, whooshity pow. Flashes, Argama. We'll prepare to support the Argama. Come on. Yes, sir. Again, these foreshortened elements as Mecha's zoom past the camera. First, we had Jared falling in the in the bar liant. Um, but these guys zooming past the camera like that is really cool looking. Nyo, nyo, nyo. Sets up the battle space really, really nicely. Weak defense. All right. Uh, established the situation with the kids. Fa's going out to fight. Wah! We reduce a bunch of the weight. And now I kind of get it. They're trying to drive the thing out of orbit. And they've only got so much fuel. Because the Argama couldn't come close enough to actually grab them directly. Because they're stuck in battle. So they dump a bunch of payload in order to get the, get the most out of their one remaining boost. Oh. That makes sense. Dump a bunch of stuff. And he goes, he uses the thing too much. And Char tells him, you're using your vernier too, too much. It's your final lifeline. Use it sparingly. And Camille 10 episodes might have gone, right? Right? Like a little resentment. Like a little, ugh. This guy telling me what to do. And he's a fucking liar anyway. Why would I listen to fucking, even if he's right? Ugh, I don't. Ugh, I'd bristle at it. Doesn't happen. Respect. That's that's good storytelling. I really think that's good storytelling. It it's immediately obvious that the interactions between them are way snappier, and Camille is way more willing to jump to. And Char is way more willing to listen to Camille. It's like it's just right. 
Sorry, I'll be more careful. <gasps> Whoa. And we get a me It's literally, he turns and Char is elsewhere. It doesn't even visually make sense, right? Char is up here. Here, use it more sparingly. Sorry, I'll be more careful. Turns and, oh, that can't go. So now Kamiyu has a, a complaint about something. It's like, the way you are doing things is not going to work. It has to be slightly modified so that it uh, incorporates all of our goals. Explain yourself. Why not? Well, it contains gifts for all the, the crew members. It matters on an emotional level to all the people. And Char goes, all right, very well. <laughs> very, very well, then. I understand. Let's keep it. And make sure that it's safe. If this is important to you, then it's important to me. Is, like... That's that's what you want from a boss or a squad leader. You know? You want to be able to come to them and say, Hey, boss. Hey, boss. There's a problem over here and I'd like to solve it. Here's how I'd like to solve it. And the boss goes, Alright. Yeah, here are the keys. Here's what you need. Finish the thing. It's what you want. You want the the idea of, if it's a problem for you, it's a problem for me. So let's solve the problem. But you also want, as somebody coming to that boss, you want to be coming to the boss with a problem and a solution. Because people come to other people with problems all the time and are like, Everything's fucked and I don't know what to do! <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> you, got, you got anything good? <laughs> I know. I know it. Problem, solution, reasoning. Problem, reasoning, solution. You get the proper, proper back and forth between the characters. Accepted. Let's do the thing. Ready, 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 ready. Let's go. And he goes and gets whomped back by, by the G-forces. Something about that stands out to me too. And I, I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of like, it's like in a, in a movie scene, you'll have a character be like, You go get him, kid! And then we, you know, the kid's like, all right, boss, I'm off! And right, we, we cut away and we cut back to the character and they go, because <gasps> they're, they've got a bloody hole in their side and they're holding up the, uh, holding up the, the. It's like he's more affected by the G-forces than he likes to admit. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck it means. And he, and he's questioning himself, right? And he's questioning them. Do we have the power to reach there? Question mark. Voice line matches? It's not just a bad translation? It's uh, kind of unclear. I, I think that putting a question mark sounds right. There's no, like, ka. There's no, like, obviously this is a question and framing sort of thing, but the, the way the voice actor says it, it seems correct. I hope the Argama will survive. I'll disconnect the joints. I'll get us, I'll get us ready. He's, like, continuously offering help. Don't forget XYZ. Sure. Yes, sir. Again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right. Fa on the other side wants to go out into battle one last time to see if she really is not cut out for being a pilot. You'd think that this would have been proven to her effectively by the narrative so far. It's not. I can't allow it. I can't allow damage to the Methus. But I'm used to piloting the Methus. And he just sort of ignores, ignores her and continues on. And he says, if your death will end this war, I'll permit you to go. It feels like this line echoes something in my brain, but I'm not sure what. Not sure. It's a cool line, though. If you going out there and dying for this is going to fix everything, then I'll allow it. Otherwise, you stay here because you're important here. There's a lot of subtext there, and I like it. Is Fa there? The kids, they're up to no good. Oh, my God terrifying <laughs> terrifying do they think they're new types or something just you watch bro <laughs> just you watch next season those are the main characters and their new types we'll see we must protect the argama in place of Camille. that's right huh and bright looks at the situation and does what good leaders do which is reevaluate his stance fa go spank him Go get him. He doesn't order her to go out in the Methus, but she takes it as such. And is grateful for it. Thank you, Captain Bright. Bam, wham, boink, boink. Get the fuck out. Get, go on, get. 
And now we turn to the title of the episode and the reveal of the episode. And the big no! 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 Rako in a Teton's outfit? No! I'd like to hear your comments on this. It's a testing, testing, testing. Any decent human being would find this unbearable. The side that is yours being attacked by us. I'm decent? What are you talking about? I'm decent and that's why I came here, she says. It's my moral sense that made me come and join the Titans. Okay, interesting. And he questions her loyalty. I'll still see you as a spy. That's quite regrettable. What are your true objectives? I just didn't want to go against what my heart feels. I don't believe you're that ideological. Uh, so he, the, the issue there is that he takes what she means as like, I believe firmly in the Titans, and that's not what she means. My ideology is to comply with what my heart feels. I will literally follow my joy. Ter terrible ideology, by the way. Don't you understand that? I'm selfish, and that's why you betrayed them? Is that wrong? Yeah, actually. Actually, I'd say yes. Yes, deeply and fundamentally, Rekoa. But we'll see if it's just... See, it's so... It's so... Flaw-ridden that I wonder if it's just a lie. Well, not just a lie, because what she feels toward Yazan is real, real, real. Interesting. It, it opens up a hell of a can of worms. Okay, we resend out the Manta Squad team, people. I, I thought they were already out there, but I guess not. I saw some new flashes. Oh, you can tell? Well, it's just how it looks to me. And we, again, we've got that sort of uh, uh, experience versus intuition. Char is recognizing that Camus has some interesting intuition about the space, and he's listening. This attack, th these weapons are great. Zap, um, Batch is a total throwaway. Bye. Sorry, buddy. They weren't going to kill a Polly, but they are going to kill Batch. Thanks, Va. Nice save. Will we get there in time? This transition is cool. Flippity whip bow. But it's not as cool as the other one where he unflippity whips and just like, like, unfolds into, it's really cool. This is sort of the conclusion of our um, interactions between Camus and Char arc of the episode. I'll take you on the Zeta, but the Zeta won't make it. That's okay. One of us making it is better than both of us making it. Or uh, uh, one of us making it is better than neither of us making it is what he means. Sacrifice. One of us making it is better than neither of us making it is fundamental human shit. And it's the kind of story beat that you can return to and and reverse because the proper position direction orientation ending time for an old type new type paired is that the old type sacrifices themselves for the new type to reach the goal not the other way around and so if we wanted to be really poetic, we could rhyme with this later on and have Char say something like, rather than go separately and neither of us getting there, it would be better if at least you got there, Camille. And then he sacrifices himself in some noble mentor sort of way, and the story goes on. Will that happen? I don't know. I kind of doubt it because Char is pretty important, but could be. Zaps, waps, thwaps, and she's not cut out for this. And this is the moment that she realizes it, I think. Because, yeah, there's damage going on, but she loses it. She doesn't have it. Bail! Get out! Leave it be. We'll, we'll handle it from here. Uh, where is the catching? Oh. Whoa. Okay, it's way simple. It's way eye tricky. Flip, whip, bam. Oh, it's so tricky. Okay. Mode, shrink, flip, whip. 
Whip bip. Bam wham. Make sense to you? <laughs> I imagine you're watching this, like, or just listening to the audio, and you're just like, what the fuck is he talking about? That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Hi! Why did you come out here? I wanted to see for myself just one more time. If I'm suited to be a pilot. And then she has obviously come to a conclusion. Don't worry about me. Go out and fight. And he does. Request for Mega Bazooka Cannon. Mega Bazooka Launcher Cannon goes. Yazan tries to stop it. He warns his homies that they need to get out of the way. Kamiu feels the vibes. Rekoa feels the vibes. It's not just like visual acuity she's able to see it. She vibes too because she's got some shenanigans in her brain for sure. They have returned to the battle area. And he listens. And it saves all of them. And he turns and looks at her and goes, Ha. Huh. You told us the truth, and that's a good way to breed some loyalty, isn't it? I do like this push-pull. Ensign Rakoa has none of that shit with guys reaching out and touching her. None of that shit. Later, guy copy dons her too, and it's a wonder they doesn't get kicked. She's here to be soldier, not to be woman. And that's an interesting distinction, because that's part of the core distinction drawn by the show. We just had a scene where Fa is going like, Am I cut out to be a pilot? I don't really know. I'm gonna go try and maybe get a bunch of people killed, including myself. We'll find out. And it's like, it's core to the, sh <laughs> core to the show. Fuck off of me. We should back up. Good point, Ensign. I felt something get in the way. Explain it so that I can understand. All I can say is that I was drawn. Drawn to what? Oh, hot boys! Hot boys! Hot boys! The cause of every great betrayal in history. Hot boys! <laughs> bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they copy on you? Put that hand up onto the wall. Loom real large and... Try not to get kicked in the balls. I know what your real target is. You actually are here to kill Sirocco. Where did you... I don't know where you got that idea, bro. And she says, I'm flattered with you overrating me, but I'm not that great a soldier. Well, you are that good a spy. Although it would be nice to attract the attention of a man like that. Oh. I don't know what that means. Ha <laughs> ha, you're really that kind of woman. I, what that means, I don't know either. No one's going to easily steal the heart of that woman. Does he mean that nobody has the heart of that woman, or that her heart already be belongs to someone? Or is he just full clueless? I think he's full clueless. Very curious. Rakoa is such a wrench in the in the works of the enemy. And it's like, it's a wrench that could be working and tightening bolts in the enemy. And it's, it's really scary. But there's the chance for a, a fucking face heel, a heel face turn from Rakoa where it's like she's betrayed, but she hasn't actually. That's really interesting. All right. It was worth it because you saved a Polly. Yes, but... I had a close call, too. And really, we're just glad that you're okay. They tried to go out into the Methus instead of me. And I couldn't help it. And I really think that there's this clear, like, clearly established by the author's gradation of responsibility in the face of potential death. It's like, well, the children shouldn't be going out and fighting in the Mecca. Period. Like the kid kids. No. No kid kids fighting the Mecca, we protect them. If it comes down to that, the women fight. If, if it doesn't come down to that, and they don't absolutely have to, the men fight. It's sort of the, the layered representation that's there, I think. I think. I don't know. We get to be genuinely glad of how it went. And we get another, another like, man-to-man, eye-to-eye, adult-to-adult, respect-to-respect between Bright and Camille. You saved us, you also saved us. Also, hi. 
Shar Aznable. Indeed, Captain Bright. And we get another interaction where Shar is able to, like, you know, he, does, he keeps the sunglasses on, but he's able to eye to eye, man to man, face to face, human to human, adult to adult, honesty to honesty. We're directed toward a goal and we're together on this, sort of. There's respect that's there that can't be there when Shar is lying. And Camus wonders what he felt and saw and vibed. It's impossible, isn't it? Maybe not. Maybe not. Cool episode of Zeta Gundam. We're going to wrap it there. I think this episode does a really good job of altering the trajectories of our characters and their interactions with each other based on the events of the previous episode. Now we're back in space. What's next? I don't know. Probably a battle of some kind. Probably... I don't know. I don't know. Got no predictions, really. We'll see. We got to keep moving in the direction. I mean, I, I imagine that we have to interact with uh, some of the financial backers and the bigger players and move a little bit more political because Shar has made these political moves. But I don't know. So we'll just have to wait and see. Thanks so much for watching. Support the channel on Patreon if you would like to. It's much appreciated. And I'll see you next week for more Zeta Gundam. Peace!